My dirty bloody underground? Yeah. What does it mean? What does it mean? Yeah, okay, so, um, well, I mean, my aesthetic is born out of DIY culture, so do, do it yourself, um, which really comes about this idea of um, instead of waiting around um, to be found, you know, you need a great gallery to show your work or you need some record label to release your album. And I know it sounds a bit weird because now, you know, you've got young kids like 10 and 12 years of age making albums in their home. But, I mean, when I was growing up, you had like a Tascam tape machine. Um, yeah, the thing about it was about take, really taking control of your own um, art and artistry and, and not being controlled by someone else and that control could be being given a show or being given a gig or being given, I don't know, studio time. So my dirty bloody underground refers to this kind of lame idea of still believing that, you know, um, the world is pure and nothing has been eroded that you believe in. But I mean, I, you know, as I get older, I completely understand that everything I believed in is completely eroded because I think we live in a culture of desperation and I think we live in a culture of not really truly believing in anything more than maybe five minutes. I mean, you know, Warhol spoke about this idea of 15 minutes of fame. I think now it's like half a second of fame because, you know, as we look at YouTube and we look at the thing that's had 50 million hits, our eyesight's looking at the other frame of all the other scenes and the other hits that we, and the other YouTube videos that we need to go to. So I guess my idea of choosing the um, Brian Jonestown massacre has to do with the fact that Anton Newcomb, who's, I think he's now in his mid to late 50s, has completely devoted his entire life his own singular vision and, and has never wavered from that vision. You know, um, and so my dirty bloody underground's got to do with a kind of idea of a dirty secret, a dirty secret being something you wish to hide and cover. My bloody underground is actually the name of the um, uh, Brian Jones Samasco album and it's taken from two, for them, and, and for me because it relates to me too, it's taken from um, my Bloody Valentine, the Scottish drone band, and from the Velvet Underground, so Bloody Underground. But it's also about this idea of Bloody Underground, this idea of violence in terms of degradation, the idea of, I see more and more bands talk about being independent, yet everything they do is about trying to be popular. They're desperate to be popular. And in fact, that's their currency. I mean, if someone told them that doing a shit and plugging it into an amplifier would make them popular, they would do that tomorrow. Because they don't really care about what they produce, they only care about the effect it has, which is making their actual the artwork. It's kind of like performance art. Anyway, so that's what the show's about. It's about this idea of Anton and the rest of the guys from the uh, Brian Jones Hamaska building this kind of insular world, and I mean insular in terms of creativity, and, and not wavering from that. Um, you know, there's a wonderful quote in that documentary, Dig, where Anton says, I'd give it away for free. And he believes that. For him, it's about this, in, art's about inclusiveness, and it's about coming together, and that his work becomes a vehicle to connect people and come together. And that's really the currency. I guess I believe in that too, um, because I think value is a very, very interesting possibility and problem at the same time. We live in a world where we have to put a monetary value on everything because that's the way capitalism has told us that that's worth something. Yet, everything I believe in in the world I came from, the values in connectedness and the values in having this amazing dialogue through the things you create and the experiences you have. And so that's really what the show is about.